All right. Welcome to another <laughs> episode of a new game show I like to call GVN Versus. Oh, um, this episode, we will be pretty much, well, not episode, this show, we will pretty much be doing a versus battle. Um, not pitting ourselves against each other necessarily, just kind of seeing where our taste in movies are. Um, and the way we kind of judge this is we do a versus and whoever, whichever movie or show has the most votes, that movie or show wins. Um, so only thing that loses is the movies or shows. None of us, uh, specifically. Um, we've had two, two nights of Martin getting really hot, Dan getting really hot. Um, so I thought we'd take a break from attacking each other and we just do it a little bit more friendly. Um, so returning is, um, uh, our first night champ, Martin. How's it going, Martin? I'm going fine. I got I got the first two shows. I got the the uh, thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. So uh, um, <laughs> it'll be kind of good to try something different this time. Absolutely. I thought we'd give each other a break uh, before we start getting vicious towards each other. Um, <laughs> also returning uh, is Tia. What's going on, Tia? Hey guys, how's everyone doing tonight? Um, I have nothing else really. This other. Nothing really to say other than, Juwan, I hope we continue these after right. quarantine is over, because these are a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, maybe we will. Maybe we will. Um, I'm finding now more people are busy in quarantine than I thought they would be. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if people are less busy, even though it doesn't make any sense if they're less busy once quarantine lifts. Um, because like I said, I'd love to have 10 of us on an episode. Um, I think that'd be a lot of fun. So we'll play it by ear. But huge shout out to Fia because last game she caught fire. Uh, <laughs> she almost took Dan out. Um, so huge shout out. Um, also welcoming back, he was not on the last show, but he was on the show before that. Dom, what's going on, Dom? What's up, man? I'm good. Uh, I spent last night watching movies that make me cry. So it'd be good to have some fun tonight. <laughs> Everyone always needs a good cleansing, man. That's what crying is. Good cleansing. Um, and welcoming for the first time to our games, Jay. What's going on, Jay? Uh, I'm awake. I'm awake. <laughs> I have no idea why I'm here or what is going on, but um, yeah, let's, uh, let's 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 make some magic happen. Absolutely. And last but not least, welcoming also new, Jacoya, what's going on? I'm good. Thanks for having me here. Absolutely. I'm excited to see what, what this is about. <laughs> Absolutely. So without further ado, we're going to just jump right into it. And our first versus goes to, brace yourselves for this one. This might be a battle between us. The Dark Knight versus Logan. Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the way we're going to break this down is I'm going to go around and you're going to say which movie you prefer. Um, so if you prefer The Dark Knight, you say why. You prefer Logan, you say why. And I keep count. Um, so this is going to be a fun one. And Tia, I made this one especially difficult for you. Um, oh, I, know, <laughs> I know how much you love The Dark Knight and how much you love Logan. So I thought I'd make this one difficult. So I will actually start with you. Which one are you oh, going God. Um, wow, that is, like, oh, talk my about God. putting me in such a difficult position, because I feel like either way, like, whatever I say, I'm going to lose if I say it, but, um, all right, so I will say, God, out of these two, like, perfect movies, I will say I prefer The Dark Knight, and I only say that, I only say that because I can rewatch The Dark Knight, but it's been a really long time since I've rewatched Logan because I cried like a little baby. And I saw Logan like three times in theaters, watch the black and white version at home and sob uncontrollably every time. So to me, it's like I would prefer to watch The Dark Knight just because I'm not as emotional or I don't think emotional at all while watching that. I feel like watching Logan where I'm just like like it's just so sad all right like Charles like suffering from Alzheimer's that like hits so I can't so yeah my answer is The Dark Knight 
it's funny because you know the you know the history that I have with with Logan um because of the fight me and the director had o- over Twitter um so it's like anytime I talk Logan it's always it's always funny to me cuz I always remember that more so than I remember anything in the actual movie um he never <laughs> came back to me actually by the way he uh he owes me an interview. Um, ooh, wow. what? Um, but yeah, he definitely owes me an interview. Um, but uh, no, I mean, look, that's a that's a really good pick. I mean, you come from a fair standpoint. Logan is very emotional. Um, it's something that you don't necessarily want to always go back to and just rewatch and rewatch and rewatch um, because of how sad it is. Um, so, I mean, good pick, good pick. Um, Dom, you're up next. Which one are you going with? Um, I think for me, I'm going to have to go with Logan. Um, Logan was actually, I want to say the first movie that I watched alone. Like I went to the theater by myself and I was like, all right, this is my life now. I'm I'm going to movies by myself. And, um, before then I've never been like a, uh, emotional movie watcher or as far as like outwardly emotional and I'm sitting in the top row and I just remember like the end of the movie like this single glory tear rolling down my face (laughs) and uh for a movie to make me feel that way I was like this is that movie so um I love I love the dark knight but seeing like Logan for me was kind of like it should have been like it's like the cap off the the end of an era, and uh, it was a perfect ending for uh, Hugh Jackman to go out. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna give it to Logan. Yeah, I I won't I won't even get into that until until it's my go. I, I'll wait because that could be a rabbit hole for me. Um, very good pick, Dom. I got you down here for Logan. I got Tia down here for The Dark Knight. Um, Martin. What are you going with? This actually, this was good for me to follow behind a few people uh, to talk about it because uh, initially I was kind of leaning toward kind of what Tia was saying. I've watched The Dark Knight numerous times. Uh, Logan, I've watched maybe once or twice. And basically the, for that, re- it's so emotional that I can't, I can't watch it a whole <laughs> bunch of time. Uh, though, I mean, if, if, if I were to look at it as far as right, being a way to wrap up the, the you know the Xavier line storyline and and uh, Wolverine as far as for Hugh Jackman goes, I mean again you couldn't have ended it much better than that. So I'm trying to fight whether I want it to judge by that or by the fact that I could rewatch Dark Knight uh, more often uh, and not you know, of course like I said it's not near an emotional film. But for just, boy, that's a tough. <laughs> uh, okay, just again, be, I guess because of the fact that it is so emotional and that I can't, uh, you know, do it. I mean, to me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go Logan. <laughs> All, right. All right, I got it out of you. I got it out of you. All right, let's add that in. Hold on, let me add in Will. Will made it in. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll be in in a second. Um, Jay, I'm going to go to you. The Dark Knight or Logan? Uh, Lo- Logan. Oh, perfect. Sure. Damn, straight off the back. <laughs> <laughs> I like no it. Questions asked. I like it. I like it. I like it. All right. Um, Jacoy, I'll go to you. Um, the Dark Knight or this Logan? is really not fair to me. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I had to come in on this evening. First of all, I've never watched Logan all the way through. That's number one. Yeah, I know. Don't judge me. You already know how good I, how I am <laughs> with movies. But this movie, I actually have not watched in its entirely. I also, as Juwan just found out via message, <laughs> that I have not watched Dark Knight in its entirety either. But, oh <laughs> but I know enough about comics on my own to try and uh, go with Dark Knight on this one. The Dark Knight? 
Yeah. I, right. I've actually seen more of Dark Knight than Logan. I, I couldn't, I couldn't you, watch it. I will tell you why I think that's a mistake when it's my turn. Uh, <laughs> here we go. But welcoming for the first time ever, Will. What's going on, Will? What's up? It's good to be hey, part of trivia you. night. Glad you're here, man. Glad you're here. Uh, I just realized that loud buzzing was from me texting you, so I apologize. No <laughs> <worries>. <laughs> All to one's fault. <laughs> it is, it is, it is. I have to take responsibility for that. Um, so pretty much, Will, I explained before, this is going to be a versus battle. So right now we're doing the Dark Knight versus Logan. We're tallying oh up to see, you know, who uh, prefers what movies more. Right now we have... Um, one, two, three for Logan, two for the Dark Knight. Uh, Where are you going with this, Will? Oh, uh, I gotta go with Dark Knight. Uh, <laughs> My man. Fight off the bat. <laughs> I mean, okay. Logan's so, Logan's amazing, but I gotta go with Dark Knight. I mean, that, that that to me is like the movie that and Batman Begins are like the the tent poles for like the modern super superhero era. All right. Well. Uh, here you know we, how Juwan pre, feels pre, about pre, pre MCU. I mean, you know, without All right, you know, they, they built Let's the stage it for it. Yeah, no, I mean, look, I, I, I've said this numerous times. The Dark Knight is a great movie, um, but it when you're doing a superhero movie, it takes more than just producing a really good movie. Um, we've seen good movies that just aren't great adaptations. Um, I look at it and I go, Logan is perfection from cinema, from storytelling from acting. Name me another actor in The Dark Knight that you thought blew you away the way Patrick Stewart did. You can't. Heath Ledger? Heath Ledger? No, 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 no. Someone <laughs> else besides the obvious one that we go to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can't. Christian Bell, I, you know, uh, okay. <laughs> granted, granted, Patrick Stewart, I mean, okay, you know, Patrick Stewart's like next level. You can't, I mean, Patrick Stewart, Heath Ledger, next level. You can't really like, Put people at that, you know, no one comes close to that. I mean, I, I, I will, I will, I will stipulate to that. But wasn't Logan not really comic book accurate with like, you know, it was supposed to be an old man Logan tale, but it really wasn't like an old man Logan tale. It was just like, here's, he is old. Bam. That's it. Well, I need to borrow it. No, off. actually it was a very, I actually have to give uh -huh. the director a lot of credit. It was a lot closer. The actual old man Logan story was him having baby Hulk and him meeting up with <laughs> blind Hawkeye and taking out a bunch of different villains from the uh, from Marvel, uh, Marvel's universe. But this wasn't that drastically different. Um, bringing in X-23, which was a very nice touch. Um, a lot of people got confused because a lot of people thought in X-Men 2, that lady was... Um, X-23, she's not. She's Lady Deathstrike. Um, and a lot of people got that confused. So it was really good to actually see X-23. You making her his actual daughter rather than just specifically a person. Um, it was phenomenal storytelling. And it adapted a Western without ever having to be a Western. It was never... We, and we love Westerns in this Western. house. <laughs> it was a beautiful western of and then when you got to see it in black and white it enforced what a western that movie was but to me i left logan going i very easily could nominate jackman i very easily could nominate um patrick stewart i thought they did a phenomenal job i left the dark knight going if heath ledger came with anything but a hundred percent this movie is an okay movie i thought batman begins was okay I thought this was okay. I thought if Heath Ledger didn't bring 100%, it's an okay trilogy. It's I okay mean, trilogy. Aaron Eckhart was really good as Two-Face, but that's just yeah. my personal opinion. I, I only reason I can't give it to him is because when you watch Logan, except for maybe Tully died, really. Um, Patrick Stewart was in almost 45 to 50% of that movie. Aaron was in at least five good scenes. Um, I, I don't take anything away from his performance. Amazing performance. But no one left the Dark Knight going, oh, Christian Bale has to be nominated. Oh, Aaron has to be nominated. Or oh, Alfred has to be. No. 
I left Logan going, they should leave with four awards come Oscar. Best director, best movie, <laughs> best actor, and best supporting actor. I even thought there was a chance you can get a Nickelodeon award for Daphne and Keen. I thought that's how great she was. Um, <laughs> to me, that movie is the only superhero movie, or comic book movie, rather, that I think is a masterpiece. I think mm -hmm. The Dark Knight is whatever a step below that is. Um, but I don't think we've ever seen anything, or we will, that will ever touch Logan, historically, because we had been waiting to see that from Hugh Jackman since 2000, when the first X-Men came out. Um, so you're not only closing the chapter on an almost 20-year book, you're giving us a Wolverine we had been waiting forever for. That scene where he's in the forest and he's freaking out, he's going berserk, I had only read about that. Like, I had never seen that in, in the cartoons or, or in the movies. Um, so that meant so much. Um, so to me, that, that movie is a masterpiece. Um, the Dark Knight is whatever is below that. And that's not a knock. I, I tell you all the time to you, it's a great movie, just not a great Batman movie. Um, so, and, and I, will hold, I will hold tall with that. Um, but yeah. I can see that, I can see that with Dark, Dark Knight Returns, but I mean, Dark Knight, I mean, that was, I mean, <laughs> to me, that was the, there when I think of, I mean, Logan's there too, but when I think of like movies that define a genre, I would have to also include Batman, The Dark Knight. Yeah, no, I'm I'm not saying, it, when we talk about movies that define a, a, a generation or we look back at some of the best movies of superhero history, it'll be very, it'll be top five for sure. Um, I'm just saying, I, I put, <laughs> I put Logan like at a, at a higher list than I would The Dark Knight. Um, but I, I could maybe say that about all superhero movies that aren't Logan. Um, so let's tally this up here. Um, Dom, Martin, Jay, myself. Logan wins that round. Let's go. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. Will, Tia, shame on you. Uh, <laughs> that's fine we'll sit in our corner and join the dark night and not crying exactly. let's move on let's move on um i'm gonna start with you will the next you. one is the first avengers movie verse infinity war hmm first avengers movie versus infinity war mm -hmm. damn oh i would i'll I will have to go with Infinity War. Yeah. All right. All right. Let me put you down. I don't forget. All right. Dom, you're up next. Oh, man. Um, I think I'm leaning towards Infinity War, too. All right. Tia, you're up next. Yeah, it's definitely going to be Infinity War. I mean, like, as big of a Loki fan as I am, nothing, like, looking back, nothing in the first Avengers makes me feel like I did in Infinity War during that whole sequence of Thor, you know, getting blasted by the star, entering Wakanda, you know, Cap and T'Challa running at full speed. Like, nothing could get to that level. Um and even like looking back and watching the first Avengers, as good as it was, and it was still good, um, it definitely was campier than I remember it being like when I first watched it. So it definitely has to go to Infinity War. Whew, this is a tough one, but you guys are making it seem like <laughs> I had a uh, I had an obvious mismatch here. Uh, Martin, what are you going with? Uh... The one thing that kind of trips me up a little bit uh, is, of course, when the, the first Avengers was out, it was the you know it was the first one where you got them all together. So you did have that you know novel piece to it, though they were building up to it all the way through the uh, individual film. Um, but unfortunately, because again, because just, we're going back to the emotional thing again. Because of the emotional thing with Infinity War, 
uh, especially how it ended. And I got to tell you, the, the video clips that we uh, had on the site today of, of audiences watching, of course, this was in game, but I forget how much fun it is to be in a theater full of people yeah. reacting to a film. Uh, I was uh, it was giving me goosebumps and tears and all kinds of things on the uh, uh, the portal thing on Endgame, uh, but because of the emotional again the emotion, the emotional reaction to the film, I'm gonna ha I'm gonna have to go Infinity War. I saw Infinity War like four times in theaters, and every single time, not only did the theater freak the freak out when Thor <laughs> arrived. But the amount of silence that you could just feel at the end of Infinity War, it's like, ooh, like, you don't get that if you don't see that in theaters. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely correct. I saw Endgame, um, I, I did see it Friday night. No, I saw it Friday morning, so it wasn't many people there, so I never got to experience that. Um, but Infinity War, I did. I got to see it with my best friend Andrew, and I remember us both crying when Peter gave that. Um, I don't feel so good, Mr. Stark. And we were like uh -huh. looking at each other to make sure the other one wasn't crying. And it was kind of like, <laughs> Yeah, are you good? I'm like, No, I'm not crying, man. You all right? And he's like, Yeah, no, I'm not crying either. It's it's okay. Um, but yeah, experiencing that. But um, I'm gonna have to be honest with you guys, as much as I think Infinity War is a way better movie than Endgame just on every level I'm gonna have to go with the nostalgia of the first Avengers movie um I will never forget um them all circling up um how great visually that looked and then the thing that just exploded my brain that I remember telling my dad like did I just see that was when Iron Man uh, was projecting his his uh, pulsar beams off of Cap's shield, like they like you were able to do in um, Ultimate Alliance, where you could like team up and do uh, power up moves. I remember going, "Oh my God! Like this is I've been waiting for this. I never thought I would see this I day." Where it's like, all that it's beautiful. Stuff. Um, so as much as I love Infinity War, because that was just the Russo brothers just outdid themselves. I can't, I can't overlook just how mind blowing um, Avengers was. And then to to cap all that, the shawarma scene was hilarious. And then to yeah. cap that, um, finding out that the person behind everything is Thanos. Like we're getting Thanos. <laughs> like I remember. It's definitely good. There's definitely the nostalgia factor because I don't think we've ever really seen anything like that before seeing all these movies come together. And I remember the trailer at the end of Captain America, the first Avenger of, and you're like, holy shit, they're all going to be in one movie together. So yeah, I mean, definitely that because like mm -hmm. now we're just used to seeing them all together. But like oh. back then it was like, oh my God, they're all coming together. And then of course me as a Loki fan was like, and Loki's going to be the main villain. Hooray! <laughs> yeah, and it, to me, as much as I love the idea of, of seeing Loki back, um, and, and I did, it, it's just the idea of sitting through the credits and seeing Thanos just put everything in a whole different lens for me. Like, this is going somewhere huge. Um, and I, just, I never thought this world would come to an Avengers movie, let alone where we ended up with, with Endgame. Um, so just off of the nostalgia factor, I have to go the original Avengers movie. And just to be a little different, because it's almost unanimously. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, all right. Um, let's see. Jacoya, where are you going with? Uh, Infinity War or the first Avengers? Um, so... Oh, gosh. I think I'm going to actually go with uh, the original Avengers as well. And um, somewhat on the, on the mindset of what you were saying, um, from the start of watching when, when Iron Man came out and then the other, you know, movies came out afterwards, you know, we didn't know 
except for those who are like super researchers, like where they were going with this, like, oh my God, like what's happening? They did a movie here and he had these end credits here and then this happened. And then when Avengers came, it was like, like how Tia said, oh shit, this is like coming into a whole thing. So the fact that that was the start of everything and that kind of like gave it the, uh, the bounce off to branch out to where we are now, even moving into the next stage, um, that's where it started from. And that's actually, I don't, I, I, I have teenage girls, so I'm like the kid in the house. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, you know, like everything is Marvel for like, we even went on a Marvel cruise on, on a, 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 a Disney had the Marvel cruise. So we actually did the Disney Marvel cruise and it was more so for me, you know what I'm saying? But you know, they obliged me and they had a great time, <laughs> but, but you know, just, be, just being able to see from where they started, um, and understanding that that part there is actually where a lot of the fans came came up. People who actually didn't know about Marvel, who didn't know about the Avengers, is when the uh, actual original Avengers came out, is when a lot of other people started coming in and it was like, okay, let's see what's going on. And people actually started going back to <laughs> do more research based off of the original one. Now, of course, Infinity Wars was a devastating time in our household. It was it was crazy for me because I know I saw it in the movie theaters and um, I didn't believe what happened myself. So I came home on the fire stick and I think I watched it like four times back to back again. Like, did this really just happen? Oh my god, did it really just happen? Like, I literally came home and watched it again on the fire stick. And so um, that alone was just like a messed up thing with it itself. But as far as um, best wise uh, um, mindset um, of, of the setup. Yeah of um of those who were marvel fans like forever who actually watched the beginning until then that right there like the pivot point for like me as a fan and like i said was able to bring my girls on at that time that they actually was like okay like we see like what's going on and it became like a whole family thing and so it. Yeah. all of us yeah i mean it, it just to me how I think that the table is very important for um, how you're able to enjoy dinner. So for you to be able to enjoy Infinity War, Avengers has to hit, and it has to hit well, um, especially because they took a break with Dom's favorite Avengers movie in Age of Ultron. Um, so it was good that we had two great movies on either side of that movie to kind of balance it a little bit. Uh, that is a little shot at Dom. Um, but... <laughs> But um, but no, Jacoy, you made a very great point. Um, to me, it's it's like you can go either way. Um, but to me, just again, I just keep thinking them in the circle was just oh, Ugh. Anyway, Jay, <laughs> Avengers or Infinity War? The only answer that uh, can be correct here is Avengers. Uh, the reason for that is the serialized nature of the MCU. Uh, the difference between a serial and a series, aside from one being one that you eat with milk in the morning, uh, a serial is episodic chapters in one continuous story. Uh, the MCU, especially the Avengers films being serialized, it's almost like asking me what my favorite chapter in a book is, and I can't really say one or the other because it requires one to get to the other. So I have to choose Avengers because I can't enjoy Infinity War without the Avengers laying down what it means. Uh, it's also most significant because it was the first time the team came together and they did so in solo films first. So it was a bigger achievement. Um, it was a harder achievement because that hadn't really been done before. And finally, um, not to talk a little smack, but if Infinity War is so great, why did it have to go back in time and lean on Avengers for a significant portion of the runtime? Just saying, Avengers, drop the hammer. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I'll even add to that. Um, Infinity War had some really great visual pieces, but to me, um, the first time I really freaked out, and it was fresh off of seeing, I don't know if any of you have saw the um, the animated movie Hulk versus, where it was Hulk versus Thor, then Hulk versus Wolverine. Um, but seeing Thor and Hulk fight was like, what time am I living in? Like, what, what, what is, is this what the Jetsons were warning us about? Like, this is how great times would be in the future? 
Um, so seeing that was just beautiful. But all right, we got Ryan here. What's going on, Ryan? How you doing, guys? Hey, Ryan. Hey. Good, good. Glad to have you. All right, so we're not in a stalemate because only three of us have picked Avengers. Four people have picked Infinity War. So I will now pose the question to you to see if we will have a dead tie or someone will kind of lean the other way. What All right, are you going with if you had to only pick one between the first Avengers movie and Infinity War? The first Avengers movie and Infinity War? I got to go Infinity War. Oh, oh. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not what I was hoping you would say. <laughs> Sorry, but man. Good pick, nonetheless. <laughs> um, so I will ask you, why why does Infinity War um get the edge over the first Avengers movie? Uh, first of all, it's the culmination of a lot of films, so there's a lot that was built into that. Um, I do like the first Avengers film, but I do have just some Joss Whedon-y problems with the first one, so I think that's what gives it the edge over. Yeah. So I'm fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Um, let's move on to our next one. Um, soon I'm gonna end this one and start up a new one. Um, but let's see if we can get one more in before I have to do that. All right. Let's right. make this a little bit more difficult. All right. Um, I'm gonna go outside of the superhero world for this one. Okay. So bear with me. I'm gonna right. go Matrix. Versus mm. Kill Bill. Ooh. And I'm gonna start with Ooh. you, Ryan. Man, um I think the Kill Bill movies are better movies, but I personally enjoy the Matrix films more for all their insane ridiculousness. Those words broke my heart, Ryan. <laughs> 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 But all right, um, Martin. I mean, they're off the wall, but I love them. The Matrix movies are just fun to watch. Yeah, I. That's a whole other conversation, but exactly. If you're talking better movie, I gotta give it to Kill Bill. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. The only reason this to me is a fair thing is because they both have something that I strongly dislike. Um, Matrix oh, yeah. t sometimes strays too far away from what the actual story was. And Kill Bill is so much damn dialogue. Uh, yeah, that's true. It drives me insane. Um, yeah. Kill Bill, superior movie. Uh, I Martin, thought you were going to say something like excessive wire work or something like that, because they both have it in both movies. Oh, yes. no. I've, I watched the show Arrow, and I watched a full season of Roy do nothing but parkour for no reason. <laughs> wire work is nothing. <laughs> There you go. Um, <laughs> Martin, you're up next. Matrix or Kill Bill? Okay, I'm going to really break your heart here. I've never seen Kill Bill. Uh oh. <laughs> so, uh, Duh, with Ma the head roll. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've, seen, uh, I've seen The Matrix, but I've, ne I've never seen Kill Bill, so I can't make a good comparison. Wow. Uh, you have Netflix, right? Yep. Your homework is to watch Kill Bill 1 and Kill Bill 2. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll be back. See you later. <laughs> uh, so I'm really, it's not a fair question for me to answer. I mean, so, because all I have to go by is The Matrix. And I thought The Matrix was fine. I mean, it's not my favorite. Even The Matrix isn't my favorite movie. Uh, so uh, just because I don't have anything to go by, I have to go with The Matrix only because at least I've seen it. <laughs> oh, man. I don't think I've ever been heartbroken more. Um, I'm sorry. The only thing that could disappoint me more is if I have a kid and he tells me his favorite superhero is Superman. Uh, that's the only <laughs> thing I think. Yeah. Somewhere Kanan is really upset with me right now. <laughs> well, that's where I would send my kid. Go live with Kanan. You no longer have a place for um, All right, Tia, you are the last person to go up before I have to start this over again. Um, which one? Are oh, you I'm sorry. Um, I have a, I have another podcast I have to go to. May I answer before I go? Yeah. Absolutely. I'm sorry. There he is. So, uh, my friend Doctor Strange <laughs> would like to answer this one for me. And uh, Doctor Strange feels like The Matrix is the superior film, and the reason is because um, Morpheus reminds him so much of the Ancient One, mm -hmm. except for his uh, skin tone. 
but that's okay because the, in the MCU, he actually changed his gender. It's all very confusing, <laughs> much like the Matrix. So I, I've got to go with the Matrix because there is no spoon. Fair enough. Jay, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're definitely going to have you on again soon. Thank you very much. Cool. See you guys later. Everybody stay See you, safe. Enjoy. Thank you. Right. Okay. All right, so Jay hit us with um, Matrix. Um, wow. Superior movie, you say. That breaks my heart. Uh, <laughs> right, uh, <laughs> I'm going to go next. Matrix or Kill Bill? <laughs> I'm just going to continue to break your heart because, like Martin, I've never seen the Kill Bill movies. Oh, so. wow. <laughs> You're going to make Dom <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. And it's been a really, really, really. I, my boyfriend's like in the background going, come on. Um, but, uh, I, and it's been a really long time since I've seen The Matrix, but I guess by the process of elimination, I'd have to say The Matrix. Hmm. All right. So, for everyone who has not seen Kill Bill, I am not even. If, if it turns out Matrix leads in this conversation, it is a um, because it does not count. This is ridiculous. Um, all of you have homework tonight. Um, Dom, shed some light, man. So, the red pill, blue pill is cool. It's cool. I, I, I won't deny that. But not only is Quentin Tarantino like a revolutionary like director, but for me, as a, I think I was probably early high school, maybe when it came out. So of course I like women, but when you see badass women who are like trained assassins and you have this crazy yet believable storyline, I was, of course it's gonna, it's Quentin Tarantino. It's gonna be a little over the top, but when you have scenes like Apparently the crazy 88 Netflix, scene, can watch it later. The, um, <laughs> The scene with Oren uh, in the snow. Uh, yeah, the snow. It's, it's just a beautiful movie, <laughs> movie man. Um, it's it's a fun. It's almost one. It's a movie that is so good that you can watch it two or three times in a row and not feel like you watched the movie multiple times. Um, yeah, man, and Uma, and it just made you like like Uma Thurman. If you didn't already feel some type of way about her uh, when she was Poison Ivy, if you saw her in person after. Kill Bill, Love you're walking Hope across the nice. street because she's gonna chop you up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Kill Bill, man. Thank you, Dom. Thank you, Juwan. <laughs> I, I want you to know by putting this in, I'm pretty sure that my relationship of 11 years is gonna go down the toilet because my boyfriend <laughs> literally just said, "You can't be my girlfriend. You've never seen Kill Bill." <laughs> He's correct. Yeah, I almost fired you just now. <laughs> The good news is, fired you and Martin. Like, the, hey, the good news is, is while we were gone, I went ahead and watched it, so it's really great. So we're good. <laughs> you got the clip notes. <laughs> no, but I, I, I will, I will say, um, being a huge Matrix fan and then being a huge Quentin Tarantino fan, huge props to my dad for that. Um, everything about Kill Bill is better. Story, acting. Um, the action. I'm sorry. There's not one fight in that original Matrix movie that's better than Uma Thurman versus a very beautiful and primed Vivica A. Fox. There's nothing in Matrix better than that fight. Nothing. And Tia, when you see it, you're going to text me like, this is so intense. Like, I can't even catch my breath. That's how intense it is. Um, and I want to get into, like, spoilers of it, but I don't want to ruin it for you and Martin. But it's like, right after the fight, you just kind of... You, you look at the screen and you're like, I didn't even think they realized they just fought. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and it's it's just, it's so good. Um, I remember at the time, it's funny now I think about it, my girlfriend at the time for Halloween, she was like, what are we going to dress up as? I was like, I'm dressing up as nothing, but you're definitely dressing up as Kill Bill. Um, and she was <laughs> like, what? Like, you're doing it. Um, but no, I, I loved everything about Kill Bill. And Dom, funny enough, while everyone was doing the backwards Neo thing, I was at home every day on my wall trying to, like, punch through it like she did 
in the cat. I was going every day, every day, man. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I must have loved you. No, no. If, <laughs> if I could have gotten that thing to work, I would have been evicted immediately by my parents. Uh, trust me, I tried. Uh, but. But no, it's it's just a way better movie. Um, it's second movie, even though I think Matrix Reloaded had one of the greatest fight uh, scenes with Neo versus the agents with the long pole. Um, mm. I still take Kill Bill two over um, over Matrix Reloaded because Dom, as you know, that that fight. No, no, I'm sorry. It was a fight at the end of the first Kill Bill versus Lucy Liu. Come on. Yeah. Come on. I was going to say, that's a much better fight, yeah. That's legendary. That's legendary fighting right there. Matrix does not have not one scene that eclipses either one of those fights. Um, thank you, Dom, for, for bringing us where we needed to be in this. In this <laughs> um, <laughs> um, wait, Ryan, did you just agree with me that that fight was epic and you still pick Matrix? <laughs> I enjoy Matrix better for all the craziness. I mean, hell, even just uh, alone, like, you, everyone always does the slow motion bend back and all that. But for me, I, I still vividly remember that helicopter crashing into the side of the building and then Trinity swinging away. Like, that was my big scene when I was growing up. I, I still think of that to this day. I would I would love to see a Trinity versus Kill Bill fight. Kill Bill would easily Trin- win. I would love yeah. to see that. I would love to see it. Um, yeah. Will, where are you at, man? Kill Bill or uh, Matrix? I, I gotta go with Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cry. I gotta go with Matrix. I, I you know, it, it, it was truly a revolutionary film. To this day, it still <laughs> resonates in, in pop culture and, and, setting new standards for everything that we've seen since it was first released. So I have to go with Matrix. All res- all, with all due respect to Quentin Tarantino, I just feel that Tarantino's films after a while just kind of feel repetitive. And you kind of know his shtick. Then City is true. And, and <laughs> you know, so, I, you know, he, you know, it's, yeah, I, I just feel that, you know, Matrix, the the first one, uh, you know, second, third, you know, they had their issues, but I mean, we all were just completely blown away the first time we saw saw the Matrix, and I mean, when you think of the depth of storytelling, uh, just the philosophical aspects of it, with the, you know, as far as just really getting to the question of existence, and what it means to be human, and all those kind of things. Matrix is just a far superior movie. So, I think so, he lost Juan on that. Yeah, no. Yeah, I killed him. <laughs> I, 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 he's like, <laughs> no. okay, I milk. killed Juan. I killed Juan. <laughs> <laughs> he's <laughs> so heartbroken. Over- right? <laughs> he's got an overheating. Sorry, <laughs> melting down here. Um. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it kills him that he's gonna have. You, 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 you it need, kills him that he's gonna have to give this to Matrix right now. <laughs> I can't even begin to to break down everything you were saying there, Will. Um, I want to cry. Uh, <laughs> just go to you. Um, not that it matters, because only man. <laughs> Sorry, I broke. I, yeah, I couldn't go with the. You know, I had to. I had to just be honest. I, I you know, uh, anybody listen to our podcast? Whenever we're on scene and nerd, I'm always honest, good, bad, in between. So, mm-hmm. I just have to be honest. I just. The such thing is too honest, Will. The such <laughs> thing is that. Um, He's real. Jacoy, I'm gonna go to you. Matrix or Kill Bill? Ah, uh, awkward. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so. I like Kill Bill. I did because I, and you know what's interesting? I actually like, when I just mentioned about Sin City, I like Sin City better than Kill Bill. Um, yeah, I do. Um, but as far as in this, we were talking about the repetitiveness because they use the same, you know, visual stuff like that and whatever. 
Um, as far as this here, I'm a Keanu Reeves fan, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we're gonna go mm -hmm. with Matrix because you know he has the guy particle, you know, like that and that that movie, um, that movie, I'm I'm all about when, when I watch certain movies, um, I like to watch things that are entertaining but also thought thought provoking. Like that movie actually had people questioning their own reality you know, after they watched it. If you actually watched it and paid attention, it actually had you questioning life, like, damn, like, is this, you know, it really had a lot of people thinking different ways, you know what I'm saying? So if you have a movie that's supposed to be, you know, um, written to, just to be entertainment, to actually transcend into mindset of people in their, in their everyday life going forward, um, that is, that kind of like got the job done. Um, they kind of did a lot, you know, doing more and more movies and from what i'm hearing they're supposed to be bringing out another one um so i'm not sure if that's gonna actually uh be successful but um because of the fact that a lot of people are like stonehead uh matrix uh cult people i think it'll be fine as far as you know on their wise but for me i don't think it would be a good thing but for the first matrix that yeah i i have to go with the matrix i have to go with the matrix um like I said, for the thought, thought, thought process and why, um, of course, they didn't have all the best, you know, acting in there. Um, action scene-wise for me was, you know, was good for me. Um, like I said, I'm not a movie, I'm not a detailed movie critic, put it like that. Um, so I, I don't nitpick. But I think for a movie that came out in, 90, in the 90s, at 99 it came out, um, that it did ver very well for what they did have at that time. Now, had the Matrix been done now in these times, I think it, it would be a lot, a lot, a lot better, te technologically wise. But um, yeah, I have to go with that. And I don't even have to. I didn't have to explain all of that aside from the fact that I'm a Keanu Reeves fan. That's basically the bottom line. So <laughs> that's that's the <laughs> hair. That's we're gonna go there. I mean, anything Keanu, he could do no wrong for me. And you know he has like you know his hero clause in his contract, so it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Matrix obviously won, but I want to point something out. I will not accept, and I will repeat this: I will <laughs> not <laughs> accept <laughs> any Quentin Tarantino slander. So the whole repetitiveness uh, of his it, it is Tarantino, but is that a bad thing? If you watch one Tarantino thing? film, you've watched him. He has a formula, and I'm not saying this is a bad formula, exactly. but but it's just okay. I, I mean, I haven't watched. I mean, I, I haven't watched Once Upon a Time. I, I should, but I'm just like okay, say, it's Tarantino, so I kind of know what I'm going to get. And yes, he's a revolution. I mean, you know, my all-time favorite one of his films is is, is Reservoir Dogs. But you know, I watch that movie. over and over again. But all his later stuff, after a while, I'm kind of like, uh, and whenever it was like rumored to think about doing a Star Trek film, I was just like, no, don't, no, you're, you know, that's that's heresy. That's heresy. But I digress. And and Joan, I you know, sorry to break your heart, but that's just. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna leave on a, on that great note of breaking your heart. <laughs> wow. Um. But about about Tarantino. But hey, man, it's been it's been a lot of fun, and uh, I'll definitely look forward to doing this again. Absolutely. Thank well, you. um, it won't be any Quentin Tarantino ones I have you on, but. Uh, <laughs> well, if you do it about Reservoir Dogs or Pulp Fiction or or Jackie Brown, then you know I'm there. But yeah, some of the other stuff uh, I had to pass. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Make sure you guys check out Will and Seeing a Nerd. Um, I believe they have a new episode up now. You can find that on our page or their page. Check them out. Thanks so much, Will. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. See you, Will. All right. See ya. Let's move on. Let's get a lot harder with these, okay? I'm going to go hey, battle, battle of what movie was worse. You ready for Ooh. this? Age of Ultron or Thor of the Dark World. <laughs> <laughs> Age of Ultron is on this list. That was, that was, that was for Dom. I'm sorry. I just, I just want to make that known. Age of Ultron is indeed on this list. Um, <laughs> no. For this one, I'm going to go X-Men 3 Last Stand versus X-Men Dark Phoenix. T, I will start with you. <laughs> now, mind you, now, mind you, they're almost 
almost the exact same movie. But go ahead, Tim. Mm. Well, I was going to, okay, disclaimer, I didn't see Dark mm-hmm. Phoenix because <laughs> from the trailer, they, they were showing like a scene from the trailer that I'm like, I'm pretty sure I saw that in X3, but I think we've had this discussion before, Joanne, but I kind of liked X3, so yeah, I, I liked X3, so whatever. Um, so I guess, again, by process of elimination, I'll have to say Dark Phoenix, because it did so poorly, and I could never get behind, like, say, Jennifer Lawrence as Mystique and all that stuff. So, yeah, Dark Phoenix. Oof, okay. Um, Bob's a rough star, you <laughs> uh, Well, no, I just have never heard someone say they enjoyed X-Men 3. Uh, <laughs> We've talked about this before, where I said, is- I like X3. <laughs> that is definitely, um, no, well, Two most unique takes I've ever heard, well, three most, is Kanan thinking Man of Steel is an Oscar movie, Tia liking X-Men 3, and Dom being one of maybe, I don't know, 2% of the world that enjoyed Age of Ultron. Um, <laughs> so, outside of that. <laughs> I like Age of Ultron. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let, let's see. Okay. Uh-huh. Let, let me put down here. <laughs> Tia, Tia has Dark Phoenix. Um, all right. All right, Martin, I'm going to go to you next. What was worse, X-Men 3, The Last Stand, or Dark Phoenix? Okay, uh, I'm going to make this short and sweet because uh, Dark Phoenix, I didn't finish. I, I didn't, uh, Of course, I didn't go to the theater to see it. I, I saw it later. I, I started it and didn't finish it. Because uh, to me, as you say, it's, it was pretty much kind of like uh, X-Men 3, and I just lost interest. Uh, so there you go. All right, fair enough. <laughs> I would suggest finishing it. I did. I threw up when I was done. You're, you're tougher than finish. I am, though. I did finish. <laughs> I got sick like immediately after. That. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ryan, where are you going with Dark Phoenix? Uh, three. My first thing was to say Dark Phoenix because I like the way Apocalypse ended things, and I actually really like that Cyclops. Uh, I like Ty Sheridan in that role because they actually gave him something to do. The more I thought about it, though, they both had a lot of problems. But with X-Men 3, uh, I just feel like there's more of a movie there. It's too much of a movie, in my opinion. Um, but, like, that moment with uh, Gene and Wolverine, on um, you know, it's that heaping pile that at the very end, he, like, would I die for? Uh, you would die for them and he's like no i would die for you and it's very like it's almost grand canal which is like this uh horror trope that's like excessively bloody but it's it's not that much but it's this beautiful sadness in that moment that i really love um so if i could cut out about half that movie and make it more moments like that i would actually put it on a regular watch list but i'm gonna say that movie is probably the better of the two uh, last stand. Yeah, last stand. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to echo you. I'm gonna go last stand. Um, mainly because, first of all, you killed Cyclops in the first ten minutes. That's a exactly. That's a strike. All right. What are you doing? You took Magneto's powers away, then gave them back without explaining it. Then you did Days of Future Past, and then didn't even explain it there. That's a strike. Mm. Um. Mm. Phoenix was horribly done. That's a strike. To be fair, Dark Phoenix didn't do it any better. But that's right, exactly. Uh, um, <laughs> you not using Juggernaut better. That's a strike because he was phenomenal in that movie. Easily a highlight. It was not usable. Um, yeah. You uh, you stripping Mystique of her powers. Uh, such a it, cool scene. I'm sorry. Like I love that scene. We talked the about the powers. That. <laughs> yeah, because, because when she, all right, because you, you have a trilogy where Mystique and, like, Magneto were, like, in sync, right? And Mystique was, like, Magneto's, like, homegirl. And then Mystique gets stripped of her powers, and you think, like, 
you know, oh, well, it doesn't matter because they spent so many years like teamed up together. And it's like, no, he suddenly goes, I'm sorry, you're not one of us anymore. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, I love that shit. Like, it was so good because it just showed like how Magneto thinks. Like, he is such an elitist when it comes to mutants that it doesn't even matter that this is someone who he's known for years. It's like instant, oh, you're not a mutant? Cut off. Like, I don't know. I, I just think it was like a beautifully tragic scene. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I saw it the opposite way. Um, <laughs> if this is the end of this trilogy, everyone better lose their powers or everyone better keep them. And unfortunately, that's so black and white. Like, you can't I, categorize like that. Yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. But me watching it going, Mystique is my favorite character because I love Rebecca Romaine. Um, mm. seeing her be the only one that legit lost their powers is like, this is disgusting. This this is horrible. This is really bad. Like she should keep her powers. It's not even Rogue you know, as well. You kept it Who cares up. about Rogue? Who cares about you Rogue? Made it <laughs> her that actress legit is why I will never watch True Blood. I have we no would if it wasn't Anna Paquin. We care about her. I have no interest in Anna Paquin. She's the most black <laughs> actress I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, but you have to watch True Blood for Alexander Skarsgård, right? That's a that's a different thing altogether. Come on now. All right, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, there's just so many strikes against this movie. Um, you exploding Charles and then Charles showing back up in the end credit scene, strike. Yeah. Strike. That's a huge strike. It strips all the emotion out of seeing Logan in, in, um, in Magneto watch him die and how emotional that was for everyone. And then Charles just mm. pops up with the love of his life in the hospital, like, yo, what's up? And she's like, oh, nothing much. You're alive. And it's like, Well, ah. because I think they did that because they were trying to open it up for the possibility that that, like, specific story in that world may have continued, but then they decided to make them all teenagers in first class. Mm-hmm. Well, well, hold on. I-, I want to bring this up. We saw Charles before Days of Future Past in the Wolverine. Didn't explain it. Then we get yeah, to the future. Fox Batman. didn't explain anything. Didn't explain. That was their thing. They just didn't yeah. like to explain. That's a knock. Yep. It's a knock. Okay. It's a knock. All right. Um, to me, Dark Phoenix was easily one of visually the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. But you have Michael Fassbender. You have James McAvoy. Um, you killed Jennifer Lawrence. So I'm like, you're doing all the right things here. So I'm like, <laughs> that <that's> <laughs> Gave it some redeemable qualities. <laughs> Yo. Um, so I was able to appreciate that. So I go back to watch X-Men Last Stand. Like, I watched it on FX maybe a week and a half ago. And I had to turn it off after the first 10 minutes when I was reminded they killed Cyclops, the leader of the team, within uh-huh. the first 10 minutes. I'm like, I, I can't watch any more of this. Like, you've easily yeah. taken me completely out of it. Um, it's like if you watch The Avengers and it's like, did they just kill Stark? It's like, yeah, they're just they're just gonna ride with you know Thor, Cap, and these guys. No, that no, that's not how it should be. Um, but I've spoken long. Ago. Um, Ryan, before you make your exit, man, I want to thank you so much for. Yeah, of course. That. Um, really quickly, go ahead and plug yourself before we go forward. Uh, right now, actually, I'm rebuilding a lot of the tech. I uh, got the computer up and running, so I'm probably gonna be converting things over to YouTube, but uh. Right now, I mean, everything should be still up on Libsyn. So nerdragepod.libsyn.com for any of our classic stuff. Uh, go there, listen. Uh, or just follow my rants on uh, Twitter at Ryan's underscore ramblings or uh, at the Nerd Rage Pod. Absolutely. Thank you, man. Yeah, see you guys later. Mm, bye. All right. Um, Dom, I haven't gone to you yet, right? Because I know I've just been talking for forever. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just very passionate about uh, Last Stand. Um, where are you taking Last Stand or Dark Phoenix? <clears throat> well, this is the thing. I didn't see Dark Phoenix because the franchise had got to the point of, like, I lost interest in what was going to happen. Um, so I'm just going to have to say that uh, Dark Phoenix was worse because I didn't want to see it at all. Damn. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. Fair enough. 
I mean, that originally was my mindset. Um, but then Joel was like, no, you kind of got to see how it ends. And I'm like, no, nah, I kind of don't. And then one day <laughs> it was on HBO and I was like, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. Um, again, I remind everyone, I've seen worse. Ang Lee made a movie called Hulk. <laughs> um Jacoy, I'm gonna go to you for you to wrap up this this topic. Um Last Stand or Dark Phoenix? For worst movies. Yep. Uh, worse. I'm gonna have to go with uh you know it's interesting. I actually like the whole reboot of when X-Men did the younger versions. Mm-hmm. I actually love that when they did the reboot. Um but it seemed like when they got the Dark Phoenix, they kind of gave up because that was when the whole mess was happening between Fox and Disney and stuff. And it's like, they just didn't even try. It took me, I think, at least five times to watch that movie to watch the whole thing because I was just like, awkward. Yeah, it was one of, it was really tough for me to watch it um, to the point that like, it'll be, be playing in the house and I'll be like somewhere else in the house and I have to come back like, oh my God, I forgot. Let me remind it. Um, when it comes to Last Stand, like you was pointing out the inconsistency that they were that they was, was happening um during those those different scenes and with the characters and stuff and then going back and forth. I just think the whole the whole franchise itself just kinda like started to like fall apart anyway, but they really like just gave up at Dark Phoenix. So I would have to say Dark Phoenix was definitely worse. I find that funny that you say that because I remember leaving Apocalypse going, they gave up. They give up. They give up here. And I saw Dark Phoenix, and I'm like, yeah, no, they give up a lot. Like, I don't think anyone remembers. Apocalypse ended with them having their comic accurate costumes, and then Dark Phoenix starts with them not having those same yeah. costumes. The most. Anyway, um, all right. So Dark Phoenix wins that one. Um, let's move on. All right, this one I really enjoyed putting on the list. Um, Martin, I'm actually going to start with you. I enjoy this topic so much. Um, Green Lantern versus Rise of the Silver Surfer. <clears throat> this for worse? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just realized it's last topic when I said oh, which was worse. Okay. That seemed a little too easy. Yeah. Which one was better? <sighs> Damn. To be honest, the Green Lantern is kind of a guilty pleasure for me, I, and I'm not sure why. Uh, it, it just kind of is. Um, <laughs> Ryan! Even, even though, well, yeah, if if, if I were to admit, uh, uh, you know, with his painted on or whatever the heck that was done with his suit, uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Talk among <laughs> yourselves. Uh, <laughs> See, cause I like the first. Actually, I like the first Fantastic Four better than the Sil- Rise of the Silver Surfer. Uh, I do like. I like the Surfer as a character. I just think he still hasn't been done uh, as well as he could be. I'm hoping Marvel can do something with that. Uh, That's tough. Cause I'm telling you right now, when I almost lost my mind in the theaters when he came out of the board. Um, yes. Like, yes. Oh my God! Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, and you can never really beat getting Lawrence Fishburne to be the voice of anything. So, well, there is that. Yeah, that's what they kind of sold me. Da, 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 da. That's almost a neck and neck tie to me. But because, like I said, because Green Lantern is, like I said, kind of a guilty pleasure. Because when it comes on TV, I will stop and watch it. Uh, I don't actually see uh, Rise of the Silver Surfer on TV very much. Uh, no, I have it. Um, I'm going to, just because they say, because I will stop and watch it when it comes on, I will say Green Lantern. All right. Um, I, it's funny that you said, <laughs> if it's on, you'll stop and watch it. Because if Green Lantern's on my television, I'll stop and, and disconnect the television. <laughs> um, Yo. I have no idea what the team was thinking when they wrote it. Um, why Parallax look like that. The main reason why I paired these two together is because they have similarities. Visually, they have similarities story-wise um, as far as just the inconsistencies and in it not really feeling like the movie it should be. Um, Green Lantern had all the right pieces to be great. 
Um, you getting Ryan Reynolds to be your Hal Jordan, I see nothing wrong with that. Um, you getting Mark Strong to be your um, uh, Sinestro, I oh, see yeah. nothing wrong with that. It's when I see what you're doing with Parallax that I go, ill. And the funniest thing about the Green Lantern is I remember when Suicide Squad came out to you and they casted Viola Davis as Amanda Waller. I remember saying to um, to my friend Andrew, like, we get to freaking see the wall. Like, we get to finally see Amanda Waller. And he goes, well, we saw Amanda Waller before. I'm like, cartoons don't count. And he's like, no, she was in Green Lantern. I'm like, no, she wasn't. And I IMDb'd it. And I'm like, it was Amanda Waller? Wow. I'm like, it was a good casting, but I never felt in that movie like I was watching Amanda Waller. Um, so, like, I look back at that movie and I hated it. I hated it even more because I'm like, how did you mess up Angela Bassett as, as Amanda Waller? Like, that should have been better. Um, but, you know, getting still, no, horrible. Um, Ryan Reynolds didn't deserve that. I'm glad that a lot of people forget Mark Strong was in it, but they don't hold that against them. Um, but, but it, it was great just... Ryan Reynolds, like, killing himself at the end of Deadpool 2, though. Like, I mean... <laughs> yeah, it was him understanding. See, even he feels the need to disconnect in some sort. So me pl- unplugging my TV, <laughs> you know, that's not that bad. He had to, you know... Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I look at that movie and I just go, I can't even watch the beginning credits. Like, there's nothing in that movie I can sit and go, <laughs> that wasn't that bad. Uh, it was god awful. Rise of the Silver Surfer, um, I only hated it once they started to get towards the end. Like, when you're telling me a cosmic entity can be stopped by doom science, I'm like, yeah, in the comics he is kind of like that, but I don't like it. And then once I got to um galactus i said oh you didn't even try <laughs> you making him a cloud that's you saying like look i don't <laughs> know how to do ran it. out of money <laughs> Lord, the budget ran out so yep well. <laughs> I, to me i'm kind of like look you make the budget work um all you had to do was just like a large face and i would have been fine um but you just making him a cloud i'm like what this is weird um but all right we got seven minutes. Dom, I'm going to go to you next. Rise of Silver Surfer or Green Lantern? <clears throat> so, I <clears throat> I think they dropped the ball with uh, Ryan Reynolds as Hal Jordan as far as not letting him be as... I mean, if you're going to put Ryan Reynolds in the movie, it's got to be rated R so he can be himself. Because if you have you tell him he has this ring that you can use your mind and create anything, Ryan Reynolds would have went Deadpool in that role and he wasn't able to do that um and I'm kind of the opposite of Martin as far as when I see Rise of Silver Surfer on I'll watch it and um I like like you said I liked where they were going until you got to the big cloud I was so disappointed I was like we get to see what Galactus is gonna look like this is crazy and that that's 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 Hurricane Katrina. What are you talking about? <laughs> that, 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 no. Um, yeah, so they they messed up there. But I do think that just the fact of seeing Silver Surfer and he actually looked like Silver Surfer. Now it's he's easy to do, but we know we've seen characters that are easy to do and they completely messed it up. Um and just the 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 team together of the fa- people who had they had played a Fantastic Four, they had great chemistry. And um, it felt very comic booky. It felt it, you felt like this is a comic book movie, like you knew what it was. So I'm gonna go with uh, Rise of Silver Surfer. Yeah, and I, I loved it when um, they were uh, Johnny was able to absorb everyone's power and then finally yeah. control it at the end. Um, I thought that was great. It felt like a comic book, and everyone that hates on it, I'm like, they just felt like comic book movies. I look at the first X-Men movie and I'm like, Tia, when you talk about how dark BVS is, I'm like, I don't think anyone remembers how dark that first X-Men movie was. <laughs> they even wore like all black. It was just so dark to watch. <laughs> Everything was at night. Was, eh. But I enjoyed the Fantastic Four movies. They felt like I was reading a comic book. The comic book might not have been that good, but it <laughs> felt like I was reading a comic book. Um, Tia, <laughs> which one are you going with? Green Lantern or Rise of Silver Surfer? 
I really like uh, the Rise of the Silver Surfer. I may be in the minority of people that actually really enjoyed that movie. I actually rewatched it not too long ago, and I'm like, I like this. Like, yeah, there, there was some cheesiness, there was some corniness when you find out like how Jessica Alba was kind of treated on set. It it tarnishes it a little, and I know from a comic book pr- uh, perspective that Galactus is super disappointing. But Juan, get ready for this. I loved when the Silver Surfer came up out of his board. <laughs> I yes. thought it was really cool. <laughs> yes, I was freaking out in the theater. I remember I was shaking my dad nonstop. I'm like, you're seeing this. He just came <laughs> out of the board. Um, and I also, sorry, and I also no, really liked Chris Evans in that because like, we're so used to Chris Evans as Captain America, but he is like, really fun and can really get into roles like that and so i really thought he was really good in the role um as johnny and i don't know it's a guilty pleasure it's i i liked it and there's something about the fantastic four movies that like like the x-men movies were some of the first before we were so used to this like top-notch like superhero movies it's like we had X-Men and Fantastic Four. So you kind of have to like appreciate it, like what they were doing at the time. Yeah, and it's funny because every time I think Rise of Silver Surfer, the scene that I can't get out of my head is at the end where they're finally having the wedding and the girl Johnny's dating is going to catch the bouquet and he like lights it on fire. He's like, yeah. no, <laughs> he's like, no, no, not happening. <laughs> I'm not doing this. I, um, um, I loved really it, quick, good, yeah. Really quick, um, I loved when Mr. Fantastic's talking about like how he has this PhD, this PhD, blah, 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 and he has this super hot wife and she's like, I'm so hot for you right now. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> you don't see that really in like superhero movies, but like a couple that's just so like, I don't know. I liked it. And it would be great to see that Mr. Fantastic interact with uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man. We'll never get it, but it would have been awesome. Yeah, we'll never get it, but it would have been awesome. But yeah, I, I, I can't. Chris Evans, to me, depending on whoever they cast as Human Torch uh, for the MCU, embodied uh, Johnny Storm. I mean, me thinking of when he first discovered he had his powers in the snow and he wraps the chick's uh, jacket over, over, you know, his naked body. And he's like, he's like, read, read, look. <laughs> and like, he's <laughs> with the fire. Uh, it, just, it, it, was, it was awesome. And he embodied what I always imagined Johnny Storm to be. And I have to give Chris Evans a lot of props. The Losers, Fantastic Four, and his, uh, you know, and obviously his uh, Captain America performance. This guy can embody comic book characters. Um, and do a really great freaking job. Um, but, Jacoya, before we wrap this this one up, before we do our last one, um, Rise of Silver Surfer or Green Lantern? I'll make it nice and easy since we got to get up out of here real quick and do a restart. Um, I've saw Green Lantern more times than I've seen Silver Surfer, so I'm going to go with Green Lantern. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't necessarily mean it's a it's a good thing. I didn't want to see Silver Surfer again, except for that part with the board thing. I actually, you know, wasn't, yeah, no. So you weren't I, even feeling the scene where, the first of all, visually, the chase of uh, Johnny versus Silver Surfer. I now listen, that real quick. Awesome. The visuals for Silver Surfer were much better as far as like the visual wise, but much better than um than green than green lantern because i don't know if it's the years or whatever but it was definitely better as far as visually wise so i'm not gonna not take it from that i'm talking about for my overall uh interest and i just and again this is something we talked about in the messenger green lantern i like i like green lantern it doesn't really matter who plays it to be honest i'm just i just like i just like green lantern Fair enough. I wish the studio liked him as much as we did. <laughs> well, hopefully we can get him back. I don't know what he's gonna. I don't know what he's gonna get to play him again. But um, I don't know. We'll see. All right. So before we wrap this up, let's rip through these last couple ones. I'm gonna save some of these for for the next go around. But let's let's uh let's rip through some of these. All right, Martin. I'm gonna start with you. Excuse me, X Men. Versus X-Men First Class. Okay, I'm sorry, say that again. X-Men 2 versus X-Men First Class. 
The reason, the reason why I stumble on these too much because uh, I, to be honest, I've watched a lot of the X Men movies, but I just really wasn't that much into them. Um, uh, I don't really have a good reason to choose one or the other. Um, so just to keep this thing moving. Um, Let's go. X Men Two. All right. I don't have a good, don't have a good reason for you. No, it's not a bad pick at all. It's <laughs> not a bad pick at all. Um, Dom, what you going with? <clears throat> I'm gonna go X Two for the um, potential that it gave the series to go to, even though it didn't go as quite. Like I thought it was gonna go, but it set it up to where you have this great Phoenix saga that we didn't get. But you know, it was it was almost there. Yeah, I, I will say nothing is more disappointing than seeing the Falcon in the water symbolizing that Gene would come back as the Phoenix. I got so hyped for where they were going, just like I think first class ended with uh Apocalypse. So I'm like I can't wait to see where they're going. And then they found a way to disappoint with both of their very <laughs> right. Uh It's it's staggering how you could go from, wow, this is really good, to where did you go wrong? Like, <laughs> why? Uh, Jacoy, uh, which one are you going with? X-Men 2 um, or X-Men 3 class? Uh, first class is the first one when they were their younger selves, right? Yes. All right, so though that was, I actually did like, I like that one, but I think that X-Men 2 um, kind of gave, all right, it did good and bad things. But what I did like is that they actually showed a lot of the characters. Like, what that, that was like the movie that had a lot of the X-Men characters in it. Like a lot of them, like, oh, I know who that is. I know who that is. Oh, look, look who they brought in here. Look who they brought in here. Um, damn. I'm gonna go against what I said earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, because you know, cause I, I actually I I liked it when they when they switched them over and they were the younger selves because you were able again like the same thing how like with with the video I was saying people who never knew anything about X but you were able to watch first class and kind of like catch up, you know what I'm saying on whatever you didn't know about X Men. Um, so. That's the reason why I actually liked when they did, when they started back over and stuff like that. But X2, I don't know. It was some, I like, I mean, and Nightcrawler was in that one, like. I still think it's, it's hard to beat out Blade. Like, it's very hard. But Nightcrawler is neck and neck with Blade for greatest opening scene of a superhero movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If I had to choose, like I said, they're both like this for me. Like I said, one, because of the fact I liked them when they did the revamp of their, you know, the, the younger selves. Mm -hmm. And X2, just because I just liked the fact that they actually, it was a lot of story there that was, um that we, people who were old comic book people who actually could appreciate as far as like storyline of them telling certain things. They missed some things in between. Um, But again, I don't, I'm not a nitpicky, you know, uh, movie person like that so i would just off the fact of nightcrawler i would go for x2 all right so to round this round this out sorry x-men 2 won but i'm actually going with first class kevin bacon was phenomenal um seeing him he was. seeing <laughs> him at his best versus michael fassbender at his best oh so awesome um like i can't get it out of my head of seeing Magneto uh, take the helmet and put it on and seeing he's going that to is true. create himself as Magneto. That is true. As corny as it was, seeing Charles paralyzed. Um, I also really, really, really loved um, it wasn't Frost. Was it Frost? Was her name Frost? The girl? Uh, yes, the other telekinetic. I think I think it was Frost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she was really good. It was just so 
good. Um, that entire cast, that entire uh, movie, top to bottom. But yeah, Kevin Bacon versus um, Michael Fassbender. That to me, as hard as it is not to go with X2 because that's technically a Wolverine movie. And anytime you give me Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, I'm usually going to like it. Um, but yeah, First Class was something truly mm. special. And it finally gave you something outside of the normal. And it had one of the greatest cameos ever. When they went to go recruit Wolverine and he told them to F off. <laughs> one of the greatest cameos. Um, so I had to go First Class. But all right, um, let's move on. Let's do, I was really looking for Tia to, to be a part of this one. Um, but Dom, this will apply to you. Age of Ultron, <laughs> Batman versus Superman. What was oh. better? What was better? Not worse, better. Uh, I'm gonna start with you, Dom. Dom, stand true, stand true, Dom. People, man. No, you know what though? Uh, I'm gonna have to go Age of Ultron, man. I. Uh... I enjoy because, like, I always look at you know when I do like my reviews, I always do um, like the social impact of like the movies and how it relates to like what's going on at the time that the movie is trying to convey its story. Yep. And you know the, the with the uh, Ultron and with um, uh, Winter Soldier, you know, it's a big thing talking about like surveillance and being hacked and all your information being out there and artificial intelligence. And uh, that was one of the biggest things that I took from uh, H Ultron um, because right now AI is one of the big talking points uh, that we're all talking about, you know, and then like the G7 and they've been talking about that for the past couple of years on what's the next step. And, you know, movies like that and I, I robot when you see like you give this, um, sentience to this all-knowing information machine, what could possibly happen. Um, I know that they kind of messed up around with like the whole Pym wasn't involved when he should have been involved and whatnot, but um, yeah, I'm going to go with Age of Ultron. Alright. Um, Age of Ultron, just factually stating this, I'm, I, I'm not, you know, hating or anything, but uh. Age of Ultron gave us the worst adaptation of an accent that I think I've ever seen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it could only be rivaled by by um Tony Montana. <laughs> <laughs> because no one sounds like that. Like no one. <laughs> no one. I, I I remember me I remember I was classmates with someone who was Cuban and I was talking he was talking to me and the whole time he was talking to me I'm like it sounds nothing like the movie. <laughs> and I asked him when he was done talking, I'm like, was that movie, like, factual? Does anyone sound like that? And he's like, no, no. no. <laughs> I was like, I didn't think so. I didn't think so. I was like, I was so ready for you to say it. Huh? And he's like, no, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, but <laughs> Martin, um, what did you enjoy more, Age of Ultron or Batman v Superman? Uh... Generally speaking, uh, you know, I, I've heard people say a lot of bad things about Age of Ultron. Uh, I didn't mind Age of Ultron. Uh, you know, there, it had its issues. I mean, but, uh, and of course, it set the, the basis up for Tony uh, losing his super bots. But uh, I, have, I have some nitpickings with Batman versus Superman. Uh, I said I never understood Batman's whole mindset. Uh, again, if you put if you put them up there, it's okay. You, you put them on one one on one TV and one on another. Which one would I watch? I'm probably gonna watch Age of Ultron. Fair enough, Martin. Anytime you need me to explain Batman's motivation, you you call. Well, but, uh, well, well uh, <laughs> by all means, we'll get back. You can explain that to me. All right, Arthur, um, thing, everything. Yeah. No, I gladly will. Okay. Uh, before I do that, Jacoya, where are you going? Age <laughs> of Ultron or BVS? Uh, well, mm. so you know, I told you, like I just saw Justice League for the first time last year, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I never seen Batman versus Superman. I'm not a DC girl. 
Um, <laughs> I haven't really been into Batman since after uh, maybe Batman versus Robin. <laughs> Um, <laughs> the worst one. I would want you to you go get you some milk, man, because you. <laughs> I don't want you to have those situations here on the, on the screen. Oh, no, I like man. I like the cheesy I like cheesy comic movies. I I love them. Like when you say you didn't like the Hulk, I love the Hulk. Like I love it. Well, well that's a whole different story. Hulk? Let's save it for the next game. Save it for the next game. Ang but, Lee Hulk, but is that the Hulk you're talking about? I watch all of them. I like them. The very first one in the early 2000s. That's Green Eyes. Cool. Yeah, I like that one with the other guy that was the oh. other hawk that had the bone in his back. Yeah. Oh. Wait, I actually no, no, watched no, no, that. No, no. I'm out. You're talking about the second one. That one was fine. Okay. I love so that. I don't, maybe not then. Okay, I'm talking so. about the one that came out in like 2001. With Eric Bana. Yeah. Yeah. The and one with Nick the Nolte. comic book looking paid thing going on. <laughs> right. It was Nick Nolte, Eric Bana. That oh, movie was literally the in oh I, with that color that yeah rough. no yeah 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 okay so no the yeah. second one then yeah okay. yeah that, <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> better. that's why I had to make sure we were clear on that. I'm are like, you going to you going to strip my comic card for me <laughs> oh a hundred percent that should that Hulk movie should never be in anyone's mouth when they're talking about superhero movies they enjoy okay it, so yeah I, I'm saved um but on this one here. I'm going to go with Age of Ultron. Yeah. Marvel can't do nothing wrong for me. So, and also back to what Don was saying, um, like I, I told you before, when I watch movies, I like to like see like the, the message in it. I always feel like there's something that is being told, whether it's a secret they're telling or it's something that, um, that I need to take back from the movie. And Age of Ultron definitely um, did that for me. Um, I, I, I like to see the part of uh, Tony actually breaking down himself there because he kind of like got humbled in this movie um and it kind of made him i think that 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 movie actually was the reason why we got the tony in infinity war and in endgame because of that there because he actually was humbled he actually had to look at himself um from there to see like you can't control everything and um this is what happens when knowledge is in the wrong hand you know so um yeah so i'm gonna go with age of ultron just for that part there, like I said, I think that, that movie was responsible for the Tony that we got in the end of the um of that uh that's that's that stage, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is easy for me. This Here we go. <laughs> they gave birth to the greatest Batman to ever exist. Um Batman's motivations, Martin, was um I mean they explained it very clearly within like the first five minutes when you He's seeing in the, the destruction in his buildings, people he knows, people he cares about are being affected by it. Um, he felt as though he needed to suit up and, and stop someone he thought was a danger to, um, to the world, only for him to find out where everyone was saying the Martha scene was so stupid and I don't get it and it's so corny. Um, I think it was poorly executed <clears throat> the actual point behind it was it was the moment Batman had fi had found out that Superman um, is is human inside. He has someone that, that loves him. He has someone that he loves. Like, he's not just this mindless monster going around. Um, he actually cares for someone. And when he said Martha, it brought Bruce back to the most humane time of his life when he um, experienced his mom and his dad die. Um, mm -hmm. So I brought it back to him of how grounded and how human someone could be, um, losing someone that they care about. So that's why Batman sprung into action when he's like, I'll save your mom, you go do what you need to do. Um, it was a human moment for Batman that purely, if you, if you saw the evolution of him throughout that movie, he was showing you he was slowly losing the humanity in him. That's why he didn't mind. I'm going to make this kryptonite spear. I'm going to drive my Batmobile through a car and kill eight people. I'm going to just murder everyone. He was losing that humanity that the Joker stripped of him when he killed Robin. Um, so Superman helped bring the light back. That's why you saw a lighter version of Batman in Justice League. Um, because Superman helped him grasp that humanity back. Um, I know for a lot of people it's easier to just say that movie was stupid and made no sense. 
But when you actually listen to to, to Zach break that down, um, or if you just kind of break it down in, in yourself, um, it was Bruce reestablishing the humanity in, inside of him. Um, and that's why he had such a great respect for Superman going forward. And that's why in the end of the movie, he's like, we got to carry on what he was trying to, to do. Um, so that to me was, was very, very, very beautifully done. Um, I just don't think the dialogue in that scene of when he said Martha was executed the best. Um, there were just so many other ways to say that. Martha? What? Why did, <laughs> well, see how I always kept, kept when I first watched it, all I kept thinking, he said, he said, you know, he's in a rage, getting ready to try to kill him. He says Martha, and I was like, Martha? Well, why didn't you say so? Well, that's a horse <laughs> of a different color. <laughs> yeah, that's why I say it wasn't executed the best, but when you break it down, that's what it meant to Bruce, and it was bringing him back to his humanity um, that we clearly see he was stripped of when Joker killed Robin. Um, I mean, he has a shrine of the suit Robin died in. Um, so obviously you could see how that could break someone. And then on top of that, he's watching his workers die in the middle of, of wherever they were during Man of Steel. Um, so you could see how it broke him down and how he was ready to do whatever he needed to do to protect um, the, the world. I think the only true issues I had with BVS was Doomsday was done horribly wrong. You killed Mercy Grave off, and you had a chance to do Metallo with <laughs> McNary, and you failed. Um, and on top of that, my biggest issue was um, I complete. I was going somewhere with it, but I completely forgot it. So whatever, let's let's move on. But I'm going BVS. Obviously, Age of Ultron won this round. Uh, <laughs> let's move on. Um, all right, so let's move on. Let's go. Let's make this fun. Let's go Deadpool versus Blade. Dom, I'll start with you. Hell no. <laughs> um, that's hard. Uh, I love both movies. Battle um, of the Deadpool actually came out when it came out. It was on uh, on that third. It was on a Thursday. It was my birthday, and I was you know I'm a big there. Deadpool fan, so I was like, gotta go. First one in the theater. Um, but Blade, though. <sighs> <Mm-mm>. <laughs> that movie's hard. It's hard to beat that movie. Yes, it um, is. <laughs> not only did they find the perfect person who actually knows martial arts to play this role, and he had the perfect one liners. And. Um, well, Frost was the, the bad guy, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Oh, Stephen Dorff is great. Um, I'm going to go Blade. I'm going to go Blade. All right. All right. Yeah, I, I was going to say, man, <laughs> when Deadpool, hold on now. <laughs> um, Jacoy, I'll, I'll go to you next. Which one are you going, Blade or Deadpool? Um, it's definitely Blade off the bat. Uh, Blade started it all, even though a lot of people act like they don't remember. Um, the fight scenes weren't fake. <laughs> you know, uh, like uh, Dom said, the one-liners. It was like you was you was the the the, the certain lines that um. Can we get hold uh, hold on, please. Oh, hold on. Yeah, no, I mean. Uh, Sorry about that. Okay, the children of children are rude. <laughs> but lizard's tails. Oh my god! <laughs> she told me about lizard's tails. Um, re- can reattach. They, yeah, they don't reattach. They grow. They re- All right, bye. Yeah, so anyway. <laughs> this is a teenager here. Okay, she wants a lizard now. Um, but yeah, uh, Blade uh, again for being the start off of. Of of everything, um, the idea of the of, of the Daywalker, um, Frost as as was the first blade where they yes with Frost with that big blob that was that that was like protecting. The, <laughs> that's like one of my favorite scenes there. I always try to mimic that voice when I'm in the house with the girls. Um, action scenes, uh, storyline. I mean. 
Deadpool was good for what Deadpool is. Like, Deadpool was the rated R movie that, you know, the adults were able to go see. It was like, all right, no kids, back, back. You know, even the same, I mean, Blade was the same thing too, but Blade was of a time before. You know, uh, Deadpool did what it needed to do at that time as far as bringing some light and fun and humor to, you know, to the, um, to superheroes or whatever like that. So that, Blade did what it, I'm sorry, Deadpool did what it needed to do at the time when it came out. As far as Blade, Blade started it all. You know what I'm saying? Blade started it all. Um, the trilogy, I love the trilogy. Anytime Blade come on TV, I actually have the trilogy here in the house. I have it in a box set. Like, it's like that. Um, I can watch it with commercials, <laughs> without commercials. Like it's always a thing. It's and it's a, it's a, it's a family thing as well. Like my family are Blade crazies. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, definitely gonna see my daughter over here. Um, definitely gonna go with Blade on this. Um, just based off of Wesley alone. Um, the top of his prime. Uh, yeah. Blade, definitely. Yeah, uh, I mean, as much as I want to go Deadpool because of what it meant historically, what it meant for... It had the greatest marketing I think I've ever seen in anything yeah. marketing. Um, I mean, it made women interested in it because it marketed itself as a romance movie. Mm -hmm. Coming on during The Bachelorette, do, doing billboards of Valentine's Day. Um, mm -hmm. Ryan Reynolds and that team did something that... I, that that movie is why I decided to, to take up learning marketing. And it's why I mentioned marketing and everything. It's why I was ahead of the curve when I told you guys months ago last year that Birds of Prey was lacking on its marketing. That it was, mm -hmm. it was going to bleed itself dry because there was just no marketing for it. We were at New York Comic Con. There was a huge billboard of it, but they weren't there. And then when they showed up, it was a surprise. Why would you make that a surprise? Why wouldn't you yeah. have a panel where we could sit down, maybe get like an extended scene we get to see, ask questions? Like, it's just duh, you know? But obviously, I think it came down to Warner Brothers didn't trust it, and they got in their own way, and they sabotaged themselves with marketing. You had Margot Robbie going hot ones, telling them how important marketing was, and how they had a whole team scouring the internet, and I'm like, then where was it? Like, where was uh -huh. your? Why did you wait to have a trailer come out? Uh, your final trailer come out close to when the actual release of the movie is. Like, a lot of that was stupid. But Ryan Reynolds did something that I don't think will ever be um, duplicated. I don't think it could ever be done better. Um, but to me, what it comes down to is Blade had again. I said this before: the greatest opening scene in superhero movie history. I've not seen anything better. Um, Nightcrawler is close, but when you think of the idea of a guy just walking into a rave party uh, where everyone is like high out of their minds, okay, starts <laughs> ripping through them. Um, it's like a bloodbath in there. It became. I look at that and I go, I don't think you could beat that. I I, I don't think you could beat that. That movie is almost flawless. Like, I can't even think of anything I disliked in that movie. Um, now I'm about to go watch Blade. Yeah, now I did have Blade I Blade. did have Batman versus Superman um <laughs> up, but now I'm about to not watch no, it. No, no, it. no, no. <laughs> you watch Batman versus Superman. That's your no. homework. That's your homework. Uh, um, me and Martin got homework. Martin, you yeah. have your homework down? Yeah, I got my homework down. <laughs> All right, Martin, to to end this uh on this topic, are you going Blade or Deadpool? Had you put Deadpool against any other film, I might have went Deadpool. But uh, like I said, Blade was kind of Deadpool before Deadpool. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, when they casted Wesley Snipes in it, I thought they were so freaking smart. Uh, and uh, I'm, again, I don't, I don't know if anybody could have done it better than they did with that one. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, just because, like you said, it was, it was pretty much the first of that type, you know, with the, the wisecracks and everything. Uh, yeah, Blade. Yeah, I, I will say, I will say, everyone keeps saying Wesley Snipes is the greatest to ever do it. I, I keep watching Mahershala Ali movies. Oh, no, yeah, I think... She <laughs> well, we do didn't it. get there yet. We didn't get there yet. Don't even... We didn't get there yet. Like, to me, Wesley Snipes <laughs> embodied what it meant to be badass. But the edge I give to Mahershala, you know, besides the fact that I think he's obviously a way better actor, 
But the edge I give to Mahershal is he's naturally cool. Like, he just – there's yeah. this sentence about him that he's just naturally suave, cool. Uh, you know, you look at him and you're like, yo, I could probably take him. But then, like, you blink and you're like, how did my head come off? <laughs> um, I'm like, I say, well, you see him like in uh, Alita Battle Angel. He's just sitting in the car with sunglasses on. Yeah, right. He, he just he just looks cool. Right? I'm telling you, I'm telling you. It's true. That's why I believe when Feige said when they said why Blade, why now, and he's like, well, Mahershala called this and said I wanted to be Blade. So yeah, and we was ready. Said, I'm like, yeah, you take that call and you say sure. When do you want to do it? Um, so when that comes out, that might. That might rival it because um, we know the movies are going to be obviously better because they're going to have better quality yeah. money behind it. Um, but nothing, no matter what Mahershala does, nothing will ever beat that first Blade movie. Yeah, we can't take that away from Wesley no, at all. No, we can't. We can't. But I mean, Wesley at that time, he was of age, like of an older age as well. I mean, Mahershala now, he's, he's, in, he's in his prime. So yeah. imagine had they gave Wesley that movie at that age. You know what I'm saying? They gave Wesley a better budget, better writers, directors, better cast. Oh yeah. my gosh! Yeah, but all right. Um, <laughs> obviously, Blade won that round unanimously. That's the first one we all agreed on. So um, um, I wanted to go Deadpool just to be different, but I, I couldn't. Uh, all right, let's go to our final one. Um, maybe not final. One. Maybe we can squeeze one or two. There's no way I'm feeling. There's no way. All right, I'm let's do. Way. I got a fun one here. Ready? Let's do Michael Jai White versus Ron Perlman. Let's go Hellboy versus Spawn. Battle of the Demons. Dom, I'm going to start with you. Um, you know, I was a big fan of the Spawn movie when I was younger. Um, I definitely like the aesthetic of uh, Hellboy. Uh, but I think uh, overall, Spawn can do a whole hell of a lot more uh, with less than, than Hellboy. Hellboy seems to kind of uh, survive on luck somehow. Um, he needs a gun or he needs to get that angry to where he becomes that superpower demon with the fire crown. Uh, but Spawn, I mean, once he knows how to control that suit, it's a wrap. Uh, oh man! But the like the the overall look and feel of Hellboy was so much better to me. Um, but there's all there's something about Spawn that has like a special place in my heart with John Leguizamo playing Violator. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go Spawn yeah I mean I, I look at it like this I look at it and I go okay we got a new Hellboy we're going to at some point once this idiot uh, Todd McFarlane gets out of his own way we'll have a Jamie <laughs> Fox Spawn um, I, I look at it and I go those are two phenomenal franchises that just for some reason just can't really get out of their own way uh, the original Spawn was way ahead of its time. Visually, it looked like it was all puppetry. Um, it it could have been done, obviously, way better if it came out a few years later. Um, Michael Jai White deserves all the credit in the world. He did an amazing job. His Spawn was very menacing, very scary. They did a great job on how he and the Violator both looked. It was everything else that looked horrible. Um, but Spawn was done so well. And without that movie, I don't think The Legend of Spawn, even though HBO tried its best with that animated series, that was really good. Um, I don't think we appreciate um, Spawn as much as we do, if not for Michael Jai, uh, Jai White and, and that cast. Um, but Hellboy with Ron Perlman, man, was that movie so much fun. And I loved Golden Army. Maybe I'm the one percent out of the two percent that actually enjoyed uh that movie but man i really freaking love that movie um I, I always felt like hellboy could have been better um but that first hellboy to me i ended up leaving the theater being more enamored with than i was leaving spawn um 
but man, that this is really this was tough for me when I when I put it in because I'm like, damn, I loved Ron Perlman's Hellboy. I loved Michael Spawn. I really loved how Spawn looked, but Hellboy to me was more fun. Um, and maybe Spawn wasn't catered to be fun, and I think it was catered to be scary. Um, you know, a, a scary comedy maybe. Um, but Hellboy just felt more fun, and it just felt more like something I would really enjoy. Um, and I ended up enjoying it. So I'm going to go Hellboy, but very reluctant. I might change it. Um, <laughs> but Martin. Um, all right, so we got a little less than eight minutes left. You going Spawn or Hellboy? Uh, another tough one. Uh, I'm a big, giant Ron Perlman fan. Yeah. Uh, I liked him back when he was in Beauty and the Beast, which tells you how old I am. <laughs> uh, um, but I, I was so excited about Spawn when it came out. And... Uh, you know, considering what they had to work with, and I thought Michael Jai White did a great job as Spawn. It looked, looked good. Um, I, as you said, I think I had a little more fun with Hellboy uh, as far as watching it. And I'm probably going to go, uh, just again, because I am a big Ron Perlman fan, I'm probably just going to go Hellboy just for that reason alone. And I'm old and I can get away with that. So. <laughs> Yeah, I will say, um, watching Sons of Anarchy truly gave me a deeper appreciation of Ron Perlman. Um, and then Hellboy just, like, you know, relit that flame. But I definitely blame Ron Perlman for this new Hellboy movie not not doing better with audiences. Because um, he, he, he almost single-handedly tainted by, like, saying how, how much he disapproved of them doing a reboot over giving him a movie. <laughs> Um, yeah, he didn't get behind it at all. So <laughs> I, don't know. Did not. I, I have a strong distaste for Ron Perlman about that because this new Hellboy movie was a lot of fun and should not have had the dark cloud of those Hellboy fans looming over it. Um, but Jacoya, to round us out on this one, you going Hellboy or Spawn? Ah, see, I was going back and forth because, you know, Spawn is like the anti-hero that you love. Um, cause he had, uh, I, I enjoy seeing characters, um, in their arc stories, like go through their transitions, uh, you know, being the human that they are, um, having that, um, tragic situation that happened in their life that turns them into who, you know, they're supposed to be. And then also having that switch, um, when the ones who are initially supposed to have been bad, you know, turns against it, you know what I'm saying, and goes for their own, you know, personal uh, belief and come back to who their true selves are. So I love that about Spawn. Um, I think I was living in Miami when that came out and we went to the, um, who's the guy that used to play in Miami Vice, the black guy? He had a theater oh, out there. Oh, no, you're talking about older. Yikes, I, I don't know. Yeah, the older Miami Vice. <laughs> but he has a, um, I am, that I went to it's the something pool. night. Is that what his <laughs> name is? But he has a theater out there. So I remember going to see it um out there at that theater and um, you know, being young with my, my siblings and stuff and just like, oh my gosh, like that was like great for us. Um, but Hellboy, that's a movie again, another movie I, I have spawned on on DVD. That was a that's in the collection. Um, Hellboy is a movie and another movie that I will watch. Commercials, no commercials. The first one, like Pearl, like Ron, he he like walked out of whatever script they wrote and like it was him. Like I don't even know how they matched that up, whereas he embodied the Hellboy character, like his attitude, the way he walked, um, you know what I'm saying, like just the, his um his vernacular, whatever, everything about Hellboy was like him. He literally, you wouldn't even see, if, if, if you see him in another movie, you probably would still think of him as being Hellboy because it's like, what are you doing? If he did anything like 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 blue collar, he had a shirt and tie on, you'd be like, who the hell is this dude here? You know what I'm saying? So I would probably have to go with Hellboy more so because there was more of a story in Hellboy. Um, uh spawn was just straightforward it was like you know he had the tragedy you know the the government turned against him and also like that whatever happened and he he tried to get a second, second chance so so like it was like a straight story straight through and you kind of like was able to figure out what was going to happen next granted it was done well i enjoyed it i love Dolly gozano you know what i'm saying um he's like one of my favorite comedians and he did a great job you know what i'm saying in his part um 
So nothing to take away from Michael Jai White. You know what I'm saying? He's an excellent, um, you know, actor. But for Hellboy, because it went through curves, you know what I'm saying? It went through the curves. It was more of a storyline. It was not, you know, you were, were not able to predict what's going to happen next. It was like, what? What? Oh, shoot. What? You know what I'm saying? So I think I will go with Hellboy just for the fact that, um, it had more movie to offer. But again, I think it, it happened much later, you know what I'm saying, than Spawn. You know, they had the budget they had at that time. But for at that time, what they did was excellent. With Hellboy, more story, um, you know, more up and down and going in. I, I, I enjoy that. So, yeah, Hellboy is another household favorite. They took it off of Netflix, right? Yeah. It's yeah. on Hulu, though. I got Hulu. <laughs> we got the fire stick too, you know. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, so yeah. Hellboy won that one out. Sorry, Dom. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Dom. But um, this this will wrap us up for this first episode of GVN versus. As you guys see, I have too much time on my hand. I've come up with a lot of these game shows for us to play. Um, I do actually, since we did two nights of trivia, I want to do two nights of this. I have plenty more. Um, uh, uh, versus battles um, for us to go through really, really, really good ones. Um, I'm surprised so, you didn't do the two Jokers. You did that already before. No, Joker, I actually have one here versus um, Watchmen versus Joker. Um, because they're totally, they're totally the same. Um, I thought if I put the Dark Knight versus the Joker, it would, uh, it's just, it's really hard, uh, mainly because one has uh, the clutch of having Batman um, and the full story of, of what you'd expect to see the Joker with. The other one is just like, hey, this is a world where there's Joker, no Batman. So, like, it's up to the cops to stop him. Mm -hmm. um, so, one kind of opens itself up more to be an original story. The other one kind of just falls on the crutch of it's a typical Batman story. Joker mm -hmm. calls Mayhem, Batman stops him. So I thought, let me go outside of the box and go, I think Watchmen was rated R. So it's the Battle of the Rated R's also, and they're both very mm -hmm. dark and gritty films. Um, so I have a lot of really good ones on here. Like one of my favorite ones was Charlie's Angels versus Birds of Prey. Um <laughs> Looper vs. Inception, Mission Impossible vs. John Wick, Saw vs. Hostel, Die Hard vs. Born, uh, the Born franchise, um, Terminator vs. I Am Legend. So, like, I got a lot of good ones. I have you guys throw me some uh, some ones you guys think are good. But um, I want to thank Will, the Cena nerd. I want to thank um, Ryan of the Nerd Podcast, Nerd Rage Podcast, um, Tia. And Jay Sandlin, uh, for all you guys joining us. Jacoya, Dom, Martin, thank you guys all also. Mm -hmm. We're going to do this again. I'm having a lot of fun with these. Maybe T is right. Maybe even after quarantine, we continue to do these. They've been a lot yes. of fun. Yes. They've been a lot of fun. So make sure you guys are sharing it, getting the conversation out there. And whatever topics you guys have, let me know. Shoot me a message. I add them in. And next game night, we'll do them. Um, all right. Thank you, guys. Until next time. Thank you. Thank you. Night, guys. <laughs> Stay safe.